Hello, I'm Jeremy Sutton, and I'm going to be introducing my brush pack called Aquatic. There's 15 brush variants, and we're going to start with the watery shimmy, the one right at the bottom there. I'm in Corel Painter 2019. I'm going to pick blue in the color picker there, and maybe as we go towards the top here, I'll actually pick a lighter blue. So I'm just going to create a quick background here um, to give us a somewhat watery feel to this canvas. And rather than keep going back by tapping on the brush selector in the top left corner, I'm actually going to use the right click or on a Mac uh, control click um, to give me the current brush category list of variants which you see listed here. So this is actually a little shortcut uh, that you can do on your own computer. Again if you're on a PC it's just right click while you're on the canvas and if you're on a Mac it's hold the control button down on the keyboard and then tap on your canvas. You get this little shortcut. It's very useful. And so we're going to go from the watery shimmy to soft wavelets. So we're sort of working our way up from the bottom there. And this is a brush that actually is working in what's called digital watercolor. And it has a nice glazing property. So this one is quite good for sort of just creating little wavelets of color throughout the canvas. And if you want to paint over these um, wavelets, then you're going to want to dry the digital watercolor. And I'm going to show you the little uh, method for doing that. So in the layers panel, you'll see that you've actually got a shortcut there, dry digital watercolor and that is uh, on a Mac shift command L and on a PC shift control L so we'll just select that and we'll move on to adding a little bit of seaweed floating down here so again I'm gonna press the control tap and we're gonna go to the flowing seaweed this is also um, a brush that is based on the digital watercolors and what you'll notice here as we just create some strands of seaweed floating down from the top is that as I make the brush stroke they've got a distinct edge and then as I let go they diffuse so that's actually a quite a nice thing about this particular quality of brush is that you get this nice softness to the brush stroke and again just um, if you want to paint over this rather than have it be a glaze on the top of everything you just have to dry digital watercolor from that layers uh, pop-up menu let's go and add a bit of floating debris and here we go floating debris and maybe pick uh, some different colors here And so this is just, again, uh, also a digital watercolor, just giving a little bit of debris floating in the water. And as I press lighter, I get smaller speckles. So this is just to sort of give things a little bit of a sense of the things that you'll find just floating in the water. So what I'm imagining here in this scene is that you know potentially we're snorkeling or scuba diving uh, we're not too far from the surface of the water we're somewhere nice and warm um, so that that's sort of the picture I'm imagining and let's add some breaking ripples to this and again control will go to the breaking ripples pick maybe a light blue and 
these uh, this brush you can use in a number of ways if you're painting a surface of water you can actually use it quite nicely to create the effect of ripples radiating out from you know a plant like a, a Monet sort of pond type of effect um, and if you're in the water which you know we this sort of imaginary scene is a bit more of that nature then you can just sort of do more gentle horizontal strokes and get that sense of the rippling of current there we go so quite a versatile brush again all of these are pressure sensitive so you'll get some interesting effects when you play uh, with pressure let's go and uh, imagine indeed that we are snorkeling and there's some air bubbles so let's go and get some air bubbles and just add a few air bubbles here and there and I've got another type of bubble here as well called uh, diffuse bubbles so let's add some of those as well And you'll notice as I'm working uh, with these brushes that I'm going back and forth with the uh, color wheel and value saturation triangle. I'm adjusting the hue in the uh, hue ring and then adjusting after that the value saturation uh, of the chosen color. Okay, that's good enough for that. And um, well, I think we're going to imagine some corals. And so I'm going to get what I've called coral mist here. And let's imagine they're vibrant and healthy. So they've got really, really some nice bright colors. And we'll go some pinks and some yellows here. So there we go. Some really nice, uh, vibrant, alive uh, coral on the floor of the scene. And um, we're going to add a little bit of glazing. So similarly to the water shimmery and soft wavelets we started with, I'm going to also pick up here something called the broad watery. Um, and again, an example of the uh, digital watercolors. Maybe we'll just take that down in size a little bit. Um, and you may have noticed then that I used a shortcut for adjusting my brush size. So this is what I tend to like to do. Although you can go up to the top menu uh, property bar here and you can tap on the brush size and adjust the slider, that's one way to do it. My preference is always to do it more visually through the shortcut. So on a Mac, I hold down the option and the command keys at the same time, and then I drag the cursor here, and that actually controls the brush size. And on a PC, it would be Alt and Control. One of the nice facets of working with these digital watercolors is that if you, for instance, make something a little too dark, um, so here we go, oops, that's too dark, then you can actually paint over it with a lighter, color and it actually replaces that darkness so it's got that nice quality and yet it's all acting like a glaze in a layer so you know it's it's really uh, can be quite subtle if you want it to be now the digital watercolor itself does not appear as a separate layer in the layers panel it just acts like it okay let's just dry that digital watercolor and let's move on to add s some barnacles to accompany the coral. Okay, let's take care of some barnacles. And I've got a barnacles gone wild brush. And I found this tends to work better with a darker tongue. So let's, um, let's maybe add some barnacles over here on the right. And you can just make them out. There we go. So a little bit of barnacles going on. And uh, let's add some 
some wildlife here, some anemones. And we're going to go for the ane anemone dabba. And again, let's have these be quite nice, vibrant. I'm just choosing a variety of different colors here to dab. There we go. What's quite nice is also the way that the color sort of mixes uh, with the color underneath and with other colors that we've just dabbed. So you get some nice multicolor effects there. Um, and I do have another anemone brush. I have two of them in this set. And this other one's called Sea Anemone Spiky. And it's a different uh, type of spikiness bit more dotted. Let's go to the dynamic sprinkler. So with the dynamic sprinkler, I created this with a fountain in mind. And it's actually sensitive to the speed with which you make a stroke. So if you do a quick, a rapid quick side to side, you can get some very nice sort of sprinkles spraying out the side of this particular brush. So I'll just do a quick couple of examples here. Of course, we are missing fish at the moment. So let's go get the Fish Exotica brush. Get some really nice bright colors going here. And press quite hard to get this effect showing. There we go. So Fish Exotica, instant fish. And we're going to finish this off with some uh, wonderful floating jellyfish but watch out for them because they may they may release ink or even be poisonous so you do have to be careful um, to obviously uh, use with caution here we're going to go for glowing jellyfish and what we're going to find is whatever color we pick here it just gives a hint to the outside and you can see here that I've created this dramatic jellyfish with quite a tail and it's got this sort of purple glow. I chose red as or pink red as the color um, and it's got this purple glow, but it is a bit dominant in the composition. So one thing you can do is go to edit fade. It fades to the last effect or brush stroke and let's fade this maybe by sort of almost 60%. And then we have this nice semi-translucent jellyfish floating in front of us. And that is where I'm gonna call it a day because we have actually gone through all of the 15 brush variants in the aquatic brush pack. So have fun and enjoy.